Hello guys, welcome to Mark Shrimp Tanks. I thought today we'd do another Into the Shrimp Room with Mark Shrimp Tanks because uh, I don't have a video for this week. My back has been uber, uber bad, right? And uh, this is the kind of video I'll do if I'm unable to do my normal video. Um, so I thought today we'd come in here and we'd just have a look around, show you what I've got. With I actually plan to show you guys a new food that I've made. Uh, we're going to test it. I've never even tested it myself. Uh, we're going to test it on stream today, on the video, and uh, we'll look around, we'll see what's changed this week, because there has been quite a few things that have changed. Um, so let's just, uh, shall we start with the food, I think? Let's go over here. So we have our new food, freshly made here. No one has ever seen this before, and this is a pea, pea-based pellet. Let me get this over here. You can tell it's fresh because it's still drying, but it will be... It will be uh, dry enough for us to have a look at. Yeah, that's fine. Isn't that nice? Look, can you see that lovely pea pellets? Right, so this was just made yesterday. Main ingredient is pea. That's why it looks so green. I wanted to try and do some more uh, plant-based uh, shrimp foods because I, I think that's better for shrimp if you give them stuff that they were designed to eat more plant-based proteins, etc. Right, so we'll try that today uh, what else will we do look at the filtration on some of the tanks because we have changed some stuff Opa Uli uh, we have shrimp coming from um, Tater Salat he has sent me almost a hundred shrimp which will be coming hopefully either tomorrow or Monday Celebacy so Tank is doing fine these guys are really really breeding like the clappers in here now Lots and lots of algae. I actually have some Nerit snails in here as well. Well, one. I did order them through the week there. And uh, five out of the eight snails that came were dead. Poor packing, bags leaked, etc. Still waiting on a refund. You now what we should do here, guys, right? Uh, I can talk about the filtration as we feed the tanks because the filtration that's changed in the tanks is I'm adding extra sponge filters to every single tank. You'll see that. But that takes time as well, right? So we'll grab some of this food here. And we'll just walk around and put it in the tank. Right? So I don't even know if this stuff, if it floats or what, because I've never even tested it, right? So let's put some in the tanks as we're going along. And we'll talk about it. Please sink. Oh, it sunk first time. I think um, peas are quite high in calcium, so they should sink absolutely no problem. I'll try to break one piece up with my hand, one single handed man. Oh. Come on, Mark. And you go. Yeah, it sinks very, very nicely, actually. Right, and we'll come back, we'll put some food in. Uh, as I said, this got a nerite snail in it. The other ones were dead on arrival. We're waiting for a refund. I actually put the, the dead snail shells in here so the uh, little cray crays could munch on them. Let's get a piece of this pea pellet in here as well. Now, if this is successful, guys, I'll actually make this and put it into my shop. Let's put a couple of bits in here. I actually give these guys a different pellet food as well. Uh, news about this top tank is we had deaths. You guys will have seen this if you watched the last stream. Uh, there was a dead shrimp. When I checked on further inspection of the tank, there was more than one. Right? And then yesterday I decided to take out all the large bricks. Because, guys, I think a lot of the problem when uh, you're feeding shrimp is if you overfeed, right? I'm always trying to get the maximum amount of uh, shrimp in my tanks, maximum breeding. So it's always very, very close to the edge with feeding in regards to what's best for breeding and what's almost dangerous in regards to polluting the tank, right? So I know for sure I went a little bit too far with this tank, uh, maybe in the last week or two, and it showed on my stream there was a dead shrimp here. And later on, I actually found another one. And then uh, yesterday, I actually gutted the tank this Savoisa tank is growing out of control in here. I gutted the tank and there was dead shrimp at the back as well. There was dead shrimp inside the Savoisa tank. Right? So this may be a wee lesson for you guys. When you do have tanks where uh, the shrimp stop feeding and you see like the odd dead one, check the entire tank. Maybe we'll do a video on that because uh, that's, that's the way I do it. I remove everything in the tank, check for dead bodies. Don't feed for a little while like now. It's very easy for me to go like this. I'm not going to feed it. 
let the filters catch up, let them clean the water. This one's also got um, an extra filter in it, sponge filter. Pat Mini, uh, not Pat Mini, what is this called? Aqua L Hub Hanging Back Filter, you can just see it a little bit there. So we'll also get another filter in here. It's the same with these tanks here. Uh, these all have been getting new filtration on top of the filtration that's already here, right? So we have more sponge filters. This one's still to get one. It's the same as everything, guys. When you order stuff, things take time to come to you. See in here, more extra sponge filters. I'm going to get another one for here. So I'm going over overboard with the sponge filters. Let's get some food in here. Let's get some food in here. There's nothing in this tank, so I'm not going to feed it. The little rillies in here are doing quite well, actually. I kind of wish I had a slightly bigger tank for these guys because uh, these have potential to be outstanding looking shrimp. This tank I'll put more food in just in a minute. I'm off camera because I only have this in my hand to feed the rest of the tanks. Oh, yeah, so as I said, my back has been mega, mega painful. I'm quite proud that that is sinking nicely. My back has been mega, mega painful this week, so it's actually stopping me doing a lot of stuff. I've been trying to walk more and more and more. And uh, once I get going with the walking, I seem to be fine, but then... I'm really, really struggling to do everything else, like uh, sitting is such a major pain in the butthole. Sitting, let's get you in there. Let's get you in here. A wee bit more. Yeah, so I've been adding lots and lots of helpings of extra leaves to all the tanks as well. How many shrimp are in this tank? Look, all over the place. Orange eye blue tigers everywhere. So I've been adding tons of leaves. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are going to see this, but I had a little issue in this this uh, the tater salad cull tub where uh, my sponge filters are constantly blocking when it's starting to happen in other tanks where I have power filters with a sponge in it. But so in this tank here, I've changed to stainless steel, stainless steel strainer at the back there, and it seems to have done the job in this one. Stainless steel strainer. These guys up here haven't uh, had their babies yet, but in the other tank we have, I'll put a little bit of food in here. Hopefully you guys can see something. It would be nice to see some of the babies that you're not going to see. Put a bit of food in here, tiniest piece of food possible. Uh, because I was looking at this one the other day, because the, the girl in here, there's I think there has been two batches in here. Uh, there was an orange eye blue tiger in here, female. I think she had her babies and I didn't see it. And I drip acclimated her back into this tank. Um, but the ones I put back in here, the uh, blue bolt, blue steel, has actually had her babies in here as well. Because I, I can see like little things, little shrimp flying around. So in here we have uh, baby um, orange eye blue tigers and steels. Right? And once, once they get a little bit bigger, we'll remove them. Let me see anything else plant wise we can look at. My jugs are getting massive. Isn't that pretty? This is Akadama soil. You could probably see that in there. I have uses for it everywhere. So I love my Akadama. I love it so much it cost me roughly about uh, $60, $70 for one bag. And uh, I think I've ordered another one actually as well. I did. I ordered another one yesterday. Shows you how good my memory is. Um, I ordered another one yesterday. That will come, so we'll have extra stuff as well. Because we're going to try something, guys. We're going to try um, to put substrate into the tanks while the shrimp in it. Right? And normally, I would never advocate this, right? But we're going to do it. We're going to do it properly, a good, good way. I have actually done it in these tanks before, but I've never shown it on stream because it's it's a little bit dangerous to do, right? And I don't want you guys to be going cray cray. Adding soil to your tanks and killing your tanks. These, these shrimp seem to be liking this pea pellet. Right, so that's what will be coming up for some of the tanks. Is, and the way I plan to do it as well, guys, is we're, we're actually going to take um, a big bag of soil. And we're only going to add like a cup of substrate to each tank that has this type of uh, active soil in it um, over months. Right, So I, th I think that will be a safe way for us to... Reduce the pH as well with the uh, dramatically, dramatically affecting the shrimp rate. So you have that to come as well. What else do we have? 
We talked about the filtration. My bad if you can hear my beard rubbing against the microphone. Um, I, I do want to put food in here, but I'm, let's just put a teeny bit in. I want to see how this does in this tank. Teeny bit. What else do I have here? I have lots of pictures to take today for my store. Links are in the description. Um, I'm just basically, guys, going over everything today. Let me put you up somewhere up here. Not my belly. Don't look up here. I'm actually not going to cut this video at all. Oh. Right, so that's all I'm doing today. Basically walking around, checking, uh, checking my shrimp food. Um, making sure I check all the stuff I have to do in the shrimp room. The things I have to do, guys, basically take some pictures today for my store, as I said, right? So we have uh, a little bit more descriptive thingamajigs and pictures of, of actual stuff in my store. The other thing as well, guys, about my store is I am really running out of things fast. So if you want stuff, specific foods and whatnot, then you better be ordering now because I don't know how long my stuff is going to last, as I just said. Um, I'm already running out of plastic spoons. I'm looking into other ways of uh, doing it more environmentally friendly with spoons. One way of that could be uh, is to not provide them at all, right? which might be an option. But I actually, I have spoons coming, so I'm not just throwing away the idea of using spoons quite yet. But I would love to see an environmentally friendly solution to the problem of having plastic spoons. Maybe bamboo, tiny little spoons, or who knows? Right, so let's have a little look at the tanks. It's been less than a minute or two. Let's have a little look at the tanks and we'll see how that food's done. If it's going to be a winner, I think it is already because the thing I like about peas is it's quite high in a good plant proteins. So it's about 25, 20, 20, 20 to 25 percent of plant protein which is in the correct ballpark for shrimp. You don't want to really go too high, like 40%, 50%. It's just kicking the ass of protein. I think um, where you will have issues with too high a protein is uh, the shrimp shell can only grow so big because it's not like a, it's not like our skin where it can stretch. Right? So if you keep on giving a shrimp too high a bit of protein, um, you, I think you might actually get the ring of death as well. I've never seen it. Can't prove it. Probably won't ever prove it, but you get the drift. Right? A shrimp can only grow as big as its shell, right? So um, if you're feeding high protein food too much, specifically to a buried shrimp, it will want to molt quicker because it's getting squished inside this wee shell. Help me, your mother efforts. Right, so try and stick to a plant-based protein that is roughly between 20 and 30%, I would say. That's what I'm, I'm aiming for with all my foods. Uh, doing away with all the animal products in it as well. That's not because I don't eat meat. That's just personal preference. I want my food to go that way. All right, let's have a little look. Let's have a little look. Let's get you, wind your neck down. This isn't Johnny Five, by the way, if any of you guys are familiar with Johnny Five in the stream. Talking of the stream, uh, we will be back tomorrow. And I plan to actually plan it a little bit better than I did the last time, as in where I'm going to have to do a checklist and check everything thoroughly before I stream. The issue that we had the last time was um, my download speed wasn't quite fast enough to keep up with me streaming. Upload speed was fine, but you, there's, there's a give and take with download and upload. Right? So if you don't have enough coming down, the stream will kind of fail. The same way as if, if, if uh, someone uses all your upload, your stream, your whole internet will fail, the download as well. Right? So that's how it works. I'll have to do more testing and fix it properly. Let's have a little look. I can't remember, guys. Did I put any in this tank? I can't remember. Do we see? I don't think I did. Let's put a little bit in here because uh, this tank is doing so, so well. The Nerea snails are in here, by the way, as well, to try and deal with this massive algae because I want it to be more like this side. See how it's all clear and open? And the reason for that, guys, is because Sulawesi snail uh, shrimp, they like to hide. They like to hide in all these crevices. If it's all blocked like this, there will be less shrimp. I can see. I wonder if the camera will be able to pick this up. Oh, look how small that one is there. Let me move this little thing. Just to show you some babines, babinos. Look at the house. You can see it. You could probably just make it as teeny white little uh, hands. There's quite a few of them. See them? All over the rocks. 
So that's what we're looking for. More rock coverage, tangamajigs. They love hanging out in, around in this corner simply because... Oh, I did put food in here. I can see all the silhouettes here, you see. Let's see how did it go. Nothing in the open early. I feed this very, very sparingly. Yes, I would say that is a winner. Giant Marissa snail. This is what I need to take some pictures of today for um, an article on my website. Links in the description, as I said before. I also got some apple snails, little apple snails. You can see one way back here. Only two survived from the snails that were purchased. I purchased four apple snails, two died, two are alive, two of them in here. There's no Marissa snails in here. We're just going to do like species specific things in the tank. So Marissa snails in here, um, apple snails in here. Anything where I have uh, hard war, harder war, we will um, add a different type of snail. Right, so up here is uh, nerites. We're going to have to try and get a hold of some more nerites. I think nerites can go in the opu early tank as well, but I think they need to be drip acclimated. These guys have some pee from yesterday, but these guys I noticed they like to eat meat. So we have some meaty based foods for them. Yes, yes, in this tank there is only five shrimp, so to have three of them at the front is a good, it's a good indicator. I don't know where these guys are, I haven't seen them today. I didn't. I did actually clean this tank a bit yesterday, so they are in here, they're just not coming to the front. Nothing in that tank. This is surprising, this one, I, there's not a single shrimp on this food. Interesting, but there is another tank. Let's have a little look in here, I'm just going to angle the camera a teeny tad better. And these shrimp like it. These shrimp like it. These guys seem to love it. This tank is a little bit dark. Big Marissa's. Not a cool looking shrimp there. You see? Hmm. It's not really like a zebra pinto anymore. Right down the side here. I haven't fed these guys yet today, but you can see down the side. You see it? Big red claw Australian crayfish. Cray cray. Orange blue tigers, they seem to love that food. There is only two male red zipper pintos in this tank, so for us to see one of them is a good sign. God, did I really put two pieces of food in here? There is only two shrimp in this tank, and I put two pieces of food. Uh, red zebra pinto female is buried on the right. Black galaxy, low grade on the left. We're going to try and make some uh, red galaxies as well. Too much food as usual, Mark. Fancy crystals, doing good. Lovely jubbly, lots of uh, buried girls. So there you have it. Oh, the other thing, just because we're talking about stuff I've done this week, I'm actually um, backing up my air system in here as well. I'm actually going to, I've already started to do this, but just just uh, depends on how bad my back is for me doing things. Um, extra air filters into each tank. We're also going to go from this main manifold over here to one of these things, to one of these tiny manifolds like this on this side. You can just see it. You see it over here? So we'll have one pipe coming from the main one, going to one of those four connectors. Right, so on tanks like this, uh, we'll have uh, one connector going to this, then we'll have a connector going to 4T, supplying these tanks, a 4T down here. Right, so that's only three connectors on that manifold for that whole rack. Right, so I'm going to do the same on this side. Uh, the top one's already done, then we have a 4T here. And then the bottom one, so if in a nutshell this one needs one more 4T to supply air to the, the top and the bottom tank. And the same will be going over here, but I think I already have the 4T set up here. You see it? The 4T. Do I need any more? I don't need air in this tank. We might put another filter in here, so that's one. This one's already, these two are already running, but we have to count them because they're coming off the same T. One, two, three, four, five. 
Aqua L tanks have not been set up yet. I've actually had these guys for two weeks and I haven't set them up yet guys because my back is so so bad. I'm struggling to bend over and things. Right, so I'm okay doing things up at like uh, eye level, chest level. Things on a bench like this is, is not too bad. It does hurt my back a little bit but there you go. Alright so nothing spectacular today. A spectacular video let me get you back up here again but I didn't not want to make a video this week because if you get into the habit of not doing things not streaming and stuff it's easy for you to, like the next time to say you know I can't be bothered making a video or I can't be bothered streaming get out of that mindset even I mean my back is very very bad but it won't stop me trying to do stuff it's important that if, if you're disabled like I am that you uh, at least try your hardest to do stuff. I mean, like today I'll go for walks, I'll stretch my back. It is what it is, so there you have it. Nothing spectacular, as I said. Hope you've enjoyed today's little snippet into the shrimp room with Mark Shrimp Tanks. And uh, guys, if you're new to the channel, then please do subscribe, hit that like button, and the bell notification is especially important because if you don't, uh, YouTube takes that as a sign that you don't want to see all the content. You guys want to see all the shrimp content. I know you do. Right, so thank you for watching, guys, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Take it away. Patreon is GoPro. Stop recording. Bloop.